I'm still working on this double slit interference problem, and I'm going to do a lot more, but I want to show you how we can calculate some stuff and what makes it complicated. So if you haven't seen this before, the basic idea, light comes through two slits and goes onto a screen, and light will take two different paths to get there from these two uh, slits because light diffracts. Since this path goes a little bit longer than that path, it's possible that, well, you will get interference at this point because the two electric field portions of the light wave won't, be, have, won't have the exact same value. And, and we, we look at constructive interference when this path length difference is an integer multiple wavelength uh, of the other path length difference, and then they would be constructive interference. Now, part of the problem is that we don't see the electric field. We see the intensity of light, which is proportional to the electric field squared. Actually, it's not. Yeah, that's true. The other problem is that the electromagnetic wave, the light wave, just looking at the electric field, uh, changes with both space, x, and time. So we have to write the, we can say it varies in a trig function. I'm going to use cosine but uh, it's going to change with time and position. And so even if I look at the position over here, the times are different. The time's going to change it, and that makes it difficult to add these two things together. It's not impossible, but I'm just letting you know we're going to have to do something different. And I'm not going to solve it completely. Uh, I'm going to make another video where we use phasers, the idea of phasers, adding electric fields with phasers to plot the intensity. But I want to just plot the electric field in this case. So here's what we're going to do. I want to calculate the electric field to be able to calculate the electric field at any point on the screen. So this is a distance L away. Uh, and I'm just going to calculate, I'm going to pick an observation point over here. I'm going to pick P1. These are vectors actually. P2. And I'll calculate this distance. And with that distance, I can plug into this equation over here and find the electric field. And then I can just vary this point at different locations. I can, I'm actually going to start here and move up there and plot the electric field intensity, the sum of the electric fields due to these two waves. Uh, and, and we'll see that there's a problem. It's not the exact pattern that we expect. And then I'll fix that by making an animated graph. OK, so let's do this in Python. What I'm going to do is to I have two points separated by a distance d. I need the wavelength lambda. I need the separation distance over here. I need the frequency. I'm not going to actually use light. I'm going to use a very, very low frequency, which doesn't work. Uh, but I want to be able to have some fun. So we'll do that. Um, let's just get right to it. You could make, you could plot these, you could make these points in actual space in Python, but I'm just going to plot the intensity going from zero and up. That way, you could do both ways. We're just going to go zero up. Down would be the same thing. Okay, jumping over here to Python. Uh, I already have some stuff. I put the wavelength. I'm calling that lamb. Uh, the frequency five. See, that's not that's not right. I mean, you could calculate the actual frequency using the speed of light, but d is my separation between my two points where the the two slits, and l is the distance to the screen, and then e zero is just my magnitude electric field doesn't really matter because I'm, I'm it's going to be scaled in terms of that let's go ahead and make my two points so i'm going to say p1 is going to be l over 2 in the positive y direction uh, p2 is going to be negative l over 2 in the in the y direction so i can put it other than that i can put it wherever i want since i'm not actually drawing it vector uh, 0 l over 2 0 and i already have l make sure you already have that and then p1 is a vector 0, negative L over 2, 0. No, that's wrong. It's D over 2. I don't know what I was thinking. D over 2. L is the distance to the thing. Uh, yeah, that's right. Now I need my observation location. I'm going to put this at the origin. Not at the origin. I'm going to put it on the y-axis, on the x-axis. OBS is a vector uh, L, 0, 0. So it's L that way. And L is 2 meters. Got it. Now, the other thing I want to do is to calculate the electric field when, if I give it uh, how far and the time. So I'm actually going to make that a function. Just I think it works out better that way. So let's make a function to calculate the electric field when I give it a distance and a time. And I'm going to call that distance 
S, right? Because it's not actually in the X direction. If I'm if I have the the light ray going in a different angle, it's just how far along that. So def E, I'm gonna pass S and time. And I'm, I'm gonna call it TT just to not get it confused. And really all I have to do is calculate this. Temporary electric field is gonna be E0 times cosine uh, two times pi times F minus two times pi times S divided by lambda. And yes, I'm passing in these global variables into the function. Some people don't like that, but it doesn't really bother me. And then I'm gonna return that value. Return ET. Now, oh, no ET. Now, one of the things I like to do is just to test it. So let's just test uh, print E, and I'm going to pass it uh, 1, 0. Yeah, at times 0. And let's just print that. Let's make sure it gives us a, a number. Do you want to make sure things kind of work? Okay, it did. That's, that's what we'd expect. <laughs> okay, fine. It seems to be working. I should save this. Uh, electric field double slit, not the intensity. Now I want to go ahead and I want a time, I want a time step. Uh, I can do zero one, which I'll change in a little bit. I want my Y value, which is the location on the screen. And then I want my, my Y step. I pick, I did this before. Let's put a very, very, very small time uh, distance step because it's light, right? We're gonna have a very small pattern. So I'm going to say dy is 0 0.00001. I, I played around with that and that's a value that works pretty well. Um, okay, let's go ahead and plot the, the electric field distribution on that screen. And so what I'm gonna do is move from y uh, as zero to 0. 0, 1. So it's not very far, right? Because it's really tiny. Uh, so while y is less than 0 0.01, do the following, which you can barely see. And uh, let's go y equals y plus dy. I always forget that. And so if I don't do that, it goes in an infinite loop. Now I'm going to be making a graph, so I'm going to need to make my graph, which I didn't do up here. g1 equals graph. No, graph. Let's give it a title. Um, two slit interference interference uh, y title is going to be the electric field let's just put that e i'll leave off the units uh, x title is y and then let's give it a width 400 height height 200 and then I need a graph, so I'm going to plot F, it's called F1, G curve, color equals color dot blue. I always like blue. So down here, the first thing I'm going to do is to, I, I need to calculate the total electric field. That's going to be the electric field due to point one and the electric field due to point two, right? So let's do that. I, I know my two, I need to find my two S values, right? Which is just going to be the magnitude of the observation location minus the point, and I can feed that into my into my function. So I can do this all in one step. E n is going to be e. Now for the first one from point one, it's going to be the magnitude of OBS minus P one t plus e times the magnitude of OBS minus P two t. So OBS minus P one that's the distance light wave one travels and I pass it time and then I do the same thing for point two. So that's not so bad, right? Now I just need to plot that F1 dot plot Y E N and then increase increase Y. That's it. Let's see if this actually oh I do need to change my OBS, right? So one of the things is that I'm changing Y, but I need to say OBS dot Y equals Y. Let's do that because um, uh, let's just say OBS equals OBS plus vector zero dy zero, and then I can just go up here and say OBS dot Y, and I don't need that. And I should probably put this down here and not indent it. Um, let's see. I think that's right. I feel like I'm making a mistake here, but let's go for it running and something 
I didn't, I didn't plot, I didn't plot, I plotted y, which I never changed, obs.y. See, that mistake I don't mind. Okay, um, let's plot the magnitude squared, right? Because that would be the intensity. Uh, and it's not going to work, but that's fine. So the intensity is going to be, let's so we'll go back up here. I should change this to I and plot squared. And there's some constant times that, but I don't really care because the whole thing scaled anyway. And let's plot that. And, and this is what we'd expect to see, right? So here's your maximum, and then you have a minimum, and then a maximum, and then a minimum. But, but you get all these other maximums in there too because, because time, because of time. So we're, we're actually not plotting, you know, we don't see, our eyes don't see the fluctuations in the electromagnetic field because it happens too fast. So we, we wouldn't see that. Um, and this isn't an actual double slip because there's some other weird things that go on, but this gives you the basic idea. But let's use this as an opportunity, take this as an opportunity to animate this graph with time and see how it changes, because that's kind of cool. And, and that's why I picked that frequency of just five hertz. Animated graphs in WebVPython are fairly easy. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is to, up here, I want to do this, redo this whole thing for every instance of time. So I'm going to uh, put up here while, let's animate this for uh, two seconds. Let's do three seconds. Uh, and I'm going to put a rate. So since I have a time step of 0 0.01, rate of 100 says don't do more than 100 of these loops per second. So animate in real time. If you don't put that in there, you're not going to get an animation. You have to have that rate statement in there. Otherwise, it's going to go as fast as it can. It doesn't know what you want. you got to tell it what you want. And uh, I'm going to reset at the beginning of the loop. I need to reset my OBS to vector 0, 0, 0, right? Otherwise, this next loop will never happen. And I want to indent this whole loop. And I don't want to plot. Let's just comment that out. And then, oops, and I want to increase time. But now we have a problem with the plotting, right? So the, plot, the problem with the plotting is that how do I plot it and replot it and replot it? And this is how we do an animated graph in Python. It's really easy. So up here, what I'm going to do is to make an empty list. I'm going to call this F1 data. It's empty. And then every time I go through my calculations in the Y direction, I'm going to add a data point to that list. And then I'm going to plot that whole list at one time. Uh, and then I can just change it. So I'm going to animate uh, not plotting, but I'm going to plot it, animate, plot it, animate. That's how it works. So the plot, I'm going to not plot. I'm going to say F1 data equals F1 data plus the data point, which is obs.y and then en squared. And you, it's a data point as a list. So you have to have the double bracket there. Okay. I always forget the double bracket, but it doesn't work without that. Now to plot it, I'm going to be out of that space loop, and I can just say f1.data equals f1 data. And you could call f1 data whatever you want. Uh, you could, some people call it data, but I don't like calling it data when I have another data in there. And that's it. That should animate the graph, unless I made a mistake, which does happen. Let's see what this looks like. Nothing. What the heck did I do wrong? Um, F1 data, OBS, I reset that, EN, F1 data, OBS Y, EN squared, increase Y, uh, F1 data equals F data, hmm, what did I do wrong, rate 100, OBS, F1 data, 0, 1, run it again, what, that's weird, DT, 
What did it do before? Does anyone remember? Is this? It's just a constant value up here. Oh, uh, did I pass T? I did pass T. I'm changing T, and I'm passing T in here. And T is changing, right? Let's just let's just do this. Let's plot. Let's just put T. I just want to see what happens. Okay, that's changing. It's T is getting greater, but the Y values are not changing. E N E N squared. I move that back. Hmm. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna do something I don't like. I actually worked out this problem beforehand. Let's just see if I can uh, copy this and get it to rerun. I hate to do this, but there's some stupid flaw in here. Now I did do this before with changing y instead of changing. Uh... Oh no. Okay, let's just run this. See, it's not moving though. Rate 100, T 0 0.01. Why did it not move? Oh dear. Hmm. Okay, I got a whole program right here. I know this one works. Let's just pull this one down. It's just some dumb error, right? It's got to be a dumb error. Here's another version. Okay, let's see if I can see this. And I'm gonna scroll up. This is the same basic idea. There's some mistake in there though. There, that's what I was expecting. So you can see the, the E squared, the intensity is oscillating up and down because that's what light does. And how do we deal with, uh, we want to find the, the vector, the net sum of the electric field, the E0, but it's not E0 because you're adding two things that are out of phase. And, and that's the problem that we're gonna have to solve to get this to work better. And you'll notice this is not, even if you smooth this over, it's not the same pattern that you would see from a double slit because double slits actually have width too. And so it's kind of like a single slit. So it's a lot more complicated than that. I'll send you the link to this code that works. And I'm gonna, in my own mind, try to figure out that old code because it just bothers me. But if you figure out that problem, maybe I put that problem in there on purpose that you could find out the mistake and then as like a homework assignment. That's what it is. It's a homework assignment to figure out what I did wrong. Uh, I'll give you both codes. Um, and then I'm gonna do the phaser thing, but I just wanna keep playing around. Okay, that was fun.